for joining. Um, I'm gonna maybe scoot this up a little bit more. How how is the audio? It's a long room, so yes, cool. All right, we're good. So yes, um, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. Um, and uh, yeah, we're we're getting to the end of uh, the fir uh, the second day. So I hope everyone um, has had enough caffeine and we're still sort of uh, amped up and ready to go. Um, I'm going to be talking uh, about, uh, well, the title of the talk is uh, Jamming with Cryo and C-Run, Facilitating the Convergence of AI, Wasm, and Kubernetes. Um, so if you're not uh, meant to be here, now would be the time to leave. <laughs> um, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Peter Hunt. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. Um, I've spent a lot of my time being a cryo maintainer, but I'm also um, a budding SIG node uh, uh, engineer. and um, am uh, have just recently become a SIG node chair, um, which I'm excited about. Um, thank you. Um, I'm also, I love to dance and um, bake, and I also collect floral pants and jumpsuits, as you can see. Um, and uh, you can see by this picture of me as uh, a 14 year old, I'm also a former musician, so I think I'm uniquely positioned to talk about jamming. Um, I'm actually really bad at jamming, so I'm not, but that's okay, we'll keep the metaphor. Um, so today, uh, you know, to have a jam, we need a band. Um, I think that that's self-evident. So unless you're jamming alone, but that could be a band. So um, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different technologies, but um, they kind of all encompass um, a lot, like generations of uh, groundbreaking technology. Some critics may also say buzzwords in this situation. Um, we begin with um, the OCI specifications and like Docker containers, as they were once called. Um, and then we move on to Kubernetes and orchestrated Docker containers. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Wasm and then uh, organizing all of those things together to running uh, next generation uh, workloads like AI and ML. Um, so, so talking about all of these different sort of uh, entities one by one, so um, and some of the value propositions that they each uniquely bring. So uh, I'm sure as everyone is familiar, um, I'm going to go quickly over this, but the OCI standards, you know, started in you know um, the mid 2010s, um, promised uh, portability um, for you know your app workloads so that you could you know run um, you know a application anywhere. Uh, you could pull it from this standard of registry, and uh, it would all work together. Um, that's where the ubiquity comes from. It's a standard, and obviously it's held the test of time because we're still talking about it more than 10 years later. Um, then you know, comes Kubernetes. Uh, you know, we're going to be talking about some lightweight uh, technologies. Kubernetes is not one of them. But what you trade off in some of the you know, more lightweight uh, aspects, you get uh, this, you know, really comprehensive platform. It's very versatile and it's very uh, configurable. Um, it's, you know, mainly for running uh, containers in production and because of that it's security minded. It has a lot of knobs to be able to secure your containers. Um, and because of its ubiquity, it is also portable. It has, you know, the pod format is, you know, something that's extended to all of their container technologies like, you know, Podman now, you know, thinks about the Kubernetes concept of a pod. Um, so thus giving us, you know, that ubiquity as well. We also have uh, Cryo, which is, I've worked on a lot. So for anyone who's not familiar, Cryo is an OCI uh, compatible implementation of the Kubernetes CRI. So moving through all of those um, acronyms, you can think of it as uh, taking the place in the stack that Podman and Docker do, but for Kubernetes specifically. So if you want to run uh, images, uh, pull images, or run containers in a Kubernetes context, Cryo will do that for you. Because Cryo is designed specifically for Kubernetes, you get some benefits like it being lightweight. It only has what Kubernetes needs and nothing more. Uh, it's also security minded because it's only meant for running containers in production. There's no other stuff that it's trying to do. Um, and it's Kubernetes focused, so it's laser focused on that vision. Next up, we have a piece of technology that's incredibly lightweight, which is C-Run, um, a, a re-implementation, an implementation of the OCI runtime specification, but in C. Um, this gives it a number of uh, benefits, uh, which I'm sure you've heard of, but the, you know, by being in C, the binary is much smaller. And it's also more natively able to do the things that an OCI runtime should do. Run C by being a Go program, it's not really Go is not really well designed to do a lot of the lower level, uh, you know, 
uh, runtime manipulation that it needs to do. So it actually runs C even forks some C itself. So having C run do it, it you know can just be a lot slimmer. Um, another advantage of C run, which we're going to be talking about specifically, is uh, it also has support for native native Wasm integration. Uh, so where a normal OCI runtime OCI uh, container is going to be a process that's exact on the uh, node itself. The C run Wasm bundles a number of different Wasm runtimes that you can use to uh, run Wasm binaries. What is a Wasm binary, you may be asking? Uh, so Wasm is a, a lightweight uh, binary format. It was originally designed for uh, running you know, code in browsers. It's sandboxed, so it's you know, security minded. But it also, uh, by being a binary format, it's very efficient. And because of all of these properties, it ends up looking very appealing for uh, running workloads in other contexts other than in uh, the browser, because uh, we love to have uh, you know, our processes sandboxed and we'd like them to be very efficient. Um, and because it's, it kind of toes the line of efficient but just easy enough to use and write that it's an accessible format, um, so you're not like literally typing in assembly or something like that, um, you get uh, sort of all of these. And, Another nice aspect of it being a binary format is it's portable, actually, from an architecture perspective. So you can run a Wasm binary, and the Wasm runtime will um, be able to run it on whatever architecture, even on uh, different op operating systems. So all of these together, we kind of think of as our band here. Um, and so these five technologies, uh, you know, when a band assembles, you know, they kind of bring their specific you know, aspects of each of uh, these sort of um, components. So like we have uh, lightweight components of C run and cryo and you know, Wasm. We have security focused aspects of Wasm. And we'll, they're kind of all security focused. But um, the ubiquity of the Kubernetes pod format and the OCI standard of pods, um, but the portability of you know, OCI and Wasm um, all together can help enable us run you know, a, a slew of applications, but specifically because it's the hot topic of today, we're going to be talking about doing uh, running AI with it. So the Jam will be really focused on running uh, AI applications um, with all of these technologies together. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of the work that has been done to uh, actually, you know, work uh, to get this all working together. Um, we can think of this as our practice before the Jam. Um, which begins with adding Wasm support in C run. This is, is kind of an old advancement now, um, you know, about three years ago. But um, C run Wasm is, was added, and there's a number of different uh, plugins that you can use for as a Wasm runtime. Um, we're going to focus on Wasm Edge today. But uh, so this, this was some great work done now that you can um, run a Wasm binary within a container, so it's still isolate, uh, it's still being sandboxed uh, as you would expect a normal container to be. It's in separate, you know, it has its own capabilities and it uh, can be confined by seccomp and all of these other things, but you get the additional layer of security of having it, you know, within the Wasm runtime, so you're being even more prescriptive about what that binary can do while also gaining the, uh, the performance advantage of running basically a binary format. Then we have uh, some work in Cryo that actually helps enable C run Wasm. So there's this, uh, there's this interaction that happens. So a Kubernetes pod, there's this notion of the runtime handler, which allows a user to ask, hey, I want to use this specific OCI runtime to run my pod. This was originally created for Kata containers, which run pods in a VM. Um, and, but however, the, like at the pod start time, we don't act, Cryo doesn't actually know what the container or what the image that the user is trying to run within that pod is going to have as its architecture, which is important because uh, Wasm uh, format, uh, you know, C run uh, is running a specific kind of uh, image. C run Wasm is running a specific kind of image, um, which has a platform OS uh, variant of WASI, Wasm32. Um, so we added this platform runtime paths uh, support so that a user, all they have to do is specify their, uh, the image in their pod spec. And if the image that Cryo pulls after the pod is created uh, is of the, of the type 
that is specified in the platform runtime path, then Cryo will call a different binary to actually be able to run it. So this is how we can have vanilla containers and Wasm containers inside of the same pod even, and Cryo will just natively figure that out. Next up, we have uh, the, um, uh, so this is, this is an advancement done by Sohan, who was uh, supposed to be doing this talk, um, but he was not able to. So instead, unfortunately, you get me. Um, the, uh, so this is for adding um, support for um, injecting plugins into your Wasm images. So what could happen is, you know, what, uh, plugins in this case are used to like, run different types of Wasm workloads. And um, you could have that injected into the container itself, but if multiple containers are using the same plugin, then you need to uh, inject that into each of the different containers, or the images, whereas uh, this is, allows you to natively uh, inject it from the host. So um, in the package for Wasm Edge, we package some of these plugins, and you can um, request to use these plugins within the container by just specifying uh, an environment variable, which I'll show. Um, and uh, that allows you to have an even slimmer image and also be sharing more code uh, among your different containers. And finally, um, something that's been murmured about a little bit today, but there um, has been a recent advancement in uh, Kubernetes uh, itself, done by my colleague Sasha, proposed originally by Sally, um, where uh, we can now mount a uh, volume into a container uh, with, from an uh, OCI image. So formally, if you wanted to share content amongst images, you would you know, have to use a volume. But if you have a volume, you don't necessarily have all of the distribution qualities of an OCI image, where you can store it on an OCI registry, and you can pull it from anywhere to anywhere with all, you know, a myriad different number of tools. So instead, now we have this ability in Kubernetes built in natively, where you can mount an image from uh, you can pull an Im you can have cryo pull an image and it'll mount it to a spec specified path inside of another container image, and that means you can you know for instance which we'll show today have a model that's stored in an OCI registry and then you can pull it down once per node and then each of these different containers can share it. A note uh, is you could you could hack this together if you're uh, amongst different images if you shared the same layer, but um, that would require coordinating the base layer of each of the containers. Just that's a limitation of the current OCI image specification. So if uh, sharing that content is, uh, would be more difficult if you were sharing it inside the image itself. So having it in a separate image means you can inject it. You can also think about it as being more sort of idiomatic with the paradigm of separating data in your app. So now you have your model server that's going to be serving the model, and then you can have the, the model itself be injected at runtime by the kubelet and cryo. So now it's time. Uh, we're going to jam. So um, I will eventually upload these slides. I've just finished them, so I didn't actually. But you can um, look at um, some of the content that we are going to be demoing. Oh, actually, sorry. Preempted. Uh, so that's some of the content we're going to be demoing here. But I'm just going to go through and describe some of the software that we need to be able to do this demo. So um, this, this is brand new content. Um, Kubernetes and Cryo need to be of the latest. In fact, the Cryo version has not even been released yet. Uh, it will be next week. Um, I promise it's coming soon, or maybe the following week. We'll see. Um, but uh, so yeah, it's so new that it doesn't even actually exist yet. But um, for posterity, this is the first version that it will have be in. But you can also run it with the latest main. Um, also, you need C run uh, 116, which is also pretty much the newest uh, version of C run. So, this is the uh, bleeding edge. Also, built with Wasm support. So, if you're uh, typically, you'd hope that the operating system would, um, would ship C run Wasm in addition to C run as a package. But if not, then you need to you know, build Wasm and then install the plugin also and you know, build it manually. Uh, we have these two, all, these two sort of um, platform configuration pieces. So the one on the left, and I'm sorry, it's kind of small. I wanted to show the whole thing. But um, that is a, uh, a script for running Kubernetes locally. Um, you would probably actually want to have a different uh, thing do it, like a kubeadm, or maybe use OpenShift to do it. Um, but for this demo, we're using local up cluster, which is just something built into the Kubernetes repo. Something specific that I want to point out here is you need to set the feature gate image volume equals true. Um, the feature gate is still alpha in 131, so uh, it is not on by default. The future work will be to enable it, but it's brand spanking new, so you have to do it yourself. 
Um, and then you have uh, the uh, cryo specification. And this is actually how cryo is being told, OK, if you, have, if you see a, a WASI WASM image, uh, you need to handle that differently. So we have the default runtime, which is CRUN WASM. And the normal runtime path will be user bin CRUN. So you can run you know, your pods container and you know, whatever other containers in the pod. But if it has this specific platform, then you're going to use the CRUN WASM uh, binary, which will actually be attached to WASM Edge or whatever other WASM runtime and run your WASM workload. Which workload, you may ask? It'll look like this. Um, Again, I apologize that this is so small. There, the, in the um, QR code that I showed earlier, and I'll show again, uh, it links to all of this content so you can uh, read it a little bit better. But what this uh, little section here is, is the model artifact image. So uh, basically what this does is we create a directory, and we pull from Hugging Face, we curl it, um, this model, and we uh, move it into that directory. And then we tar it up, so we have you know, basically a a tar file, which is just what an OCI image is. We have this, uh, this configuration, which is actually just empty. And then we use, we use ORAS to push it. Um, if you need to learn more about ORAS, then uh, Andy did a good talk earlier about that. So catch the video if you missed that. Um, but this is you know, something to push OCI artifacts between places. And we're doing just that here. So we're going to push this to um, an OCI registry. This, we're using Quay. Um, it'll take a while because this is like a four gigabyte image, but you know you only have to pull it back down once. Um, so uh, bear with it, um, or once per node, I guess. Um, next up, we have the container file that we're going to be using to actually run this content. So uh, we have um, it's just you know in a scratch image. It's pretty uh, minimal. You know we have a couple of environment variables. This Wasm Edge plugin path piece. That's how we're telling uh, you know C run Wasm. Hey, you can use the hosts. Um, Wasm Edge uh, shared library. So this plugin will actually not need to be built into the container itself. Otherwise, you'd have to pull the shared library in as well. Um, this piece is just saying uh, we need the uh, model from app slash model. Um, and, is, uh, and we'll look at the pod spec in a moment. And then all, all the rest of it is just copy our Wasm binary, which is just a chatbot that uses the language model here. Um, to, and it'll be serving that um, uh, through uh, standard in. And then uh, we have our pod that is going to be built uh, around this container. And uh, that'll be coming from uh, this location, which we'll push uh, this image to. Uh, notice the volume mount piece. So this image, this is the brand's make a new piece. So the image, uh, it has this reference, which is the location of this AI model that we pushed from here. Um, and because we've built this natively into Q, uh, the Kubernetes and we haven't you know, implemented it as a CSI storage driver or something like that, we get some of the uh, Kubernetes primitives that you can uh, use, like you know, the pull policy, if not present for free. And the Kubelet will just sort of handle this for you. It'll ask Cryo, hey, is this image there? And Cryo will be like, I don't have it yet. And then the Kubelet will ask Cryo to pull it. Um, you also have native garbage collection. So once the pod is uh, removed, the Kubelet will notice this because it's attached to the pod lifecycle, and it'll remove the image as well. So you have sort of uh, the same lifecycle of images at, uh, for these uh, volumes, which it pairs quite nicely, which is why we wanted to build it into Kubernetes specifically. Um, and that is mounted at slash app, which we've told our, um, our Wasm binary to uh, know about. So slash app slash model dot DGUF. Um, and as you know, that's the name of this file here. So this file will actually just put, be put directly into slash app um, and be accessible. We also turn on standard in and TTY because we're going to be talking to it through standard in. Um, and so here is our pod. Let's um, run it. And I'm not going to run it live. Um, so I'm going to run it uh, from here. And um, so th some of this is going to be a little bit repeated. but. Um, we have, we're going to start cryo and um, a specific, you know, the platform runtime paths. Um, we're going to have, oh, I uh, missed that part. There we go. So this is the, um, the cryo configuration that we want to be able to run um, the Wasm binary, specifically if uh, it's, it's a Wasm. And then we're going to start cryo with that configuration, blah, blah, blah. We're going to fast forward. This is part why I didn't do it live. Um, Kubernetes is starting. Hooray, it started. Um, 
So now we have a Kubernetes cluster running locally. Um, we're going to show the same container file that we had earlier. Um, we are going to, I forget if we build it or not. Um, nope, we've already built it and we've already pulled it back down. So uh, now we're going to inspect this image that we've uh, pulled back down, or the, the image itself for the workload. Um, and we're going to scroll up and show. So the uh, platform and the OS of this image are going to be shown to be, you can see this architecture is WASM32 and the OS is WASI. So Cryo will use these keys to note, oh, well, I was told that when I saw something that was WASI WASM32, I need to run with uh, CRUN WASM instead of running with CRUN. So that's how that sort of magically works. And all the user has to do is make sure that they have the right platform and OS variant, and the platform administrator needs to set up their Cryo configuration to be able to handle that. And it just happens magically in the background. Um, now we're going to look at our, um, this is our pod spec again, same thing, blah, blah, blah. And now we're actually going to run it. Um, and this will run, you know, like any. Uh, now we're going to check the logs of this container. Um, so uh, we'll be able to show here is our um, chatbot. So we could, uh, um, it's, it's ready and waiting to talk to us. And it's sort of just spinning, waiting for that. So uh, let's talk to it. Let's give it what it wants. Um, so we're going to attach to it using kubectl, um, standard uh, practice there. Um, because we gave the pod uh, TTY and uh, told it to listen for standard in. So now we can use kubectl and attach to it. And now we can talk to it. And we can be like, hello. And the bot will take a while because we don't have a GPU set up. But it's really thinking about it. And the CPU is really cranking. And eventually, <laughs> it's really thinking about it. And it's OK, it's going to respond. That's very nice of it. Um, and we didn't ask it anything because we didn't want it to hallucinate. But um, so uh, that's our demo. So, I, so you know, in summary, we have um, a WASM process running inside of an OCI container run by C, run in cryo, running inside of a Kubernetes cluster that you can use standard tools like OCI um, to distribute and, you know, kubectl to communicate with, um, but talk to this next generation uh, application that can uh, communicate, you know, communicate back with us um, however well it does. So that was our jam. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the future. Um, so we have a couple of steps in the future that we're thinking about. I mean, there's going to be a lot more work. But specifically to this, you know, this is some of the things that um, we're thinking about. So further the OCI volume out in Kubernetes. It's currently at alpha. We're going to make it beta. I mean, at this point, I don't expect the implementation to ch change very much. It's mostly just to make sure that it's stable and it works and we like it um, and wait for other projects like ContainerD to catch up. Um, and then um, another uh, piece of future work is we're thinking about um, this is maybe a little bit more for local development, but using uh, you know something like web GPU so that um, you know the Wasm uh, process can actually access the uh, you know next gen hardware and be able to run a little bit faster, so it can respond to hello like a little bit faster than that. Um, finally, um, you know something that the Kubernetes community in general is thinking about is the way to schedule workloads so that it's aligned topologically with the, that next gen hardware, and we're going to use DRA uh, uh, dynamic resource allocation to do that. Um, so that's more of running. Um, these AI applications at scale and being able to make sure that you know the workloads that you want to run are aligned from a hardware perspective with the nodes that are actually able to run them. Um, so in the future, you might have to also specify in your pod spec, like, hey, I also want to be aligned so that our you know NVIDIA GPU is able to be utilized and my chatbot won't take forever to respond to hi. Um, here's some references um, that you can quickly memorize or look back later. Um, Here's some content. Uh, this is the Cryo GitHub and Slack, where you can reach out and harass us if something doesn't work. Um, and uh, does anyone have any questions? Uh, so in the demo, I noticed that your container file, you mentioned something about like, uh, like that environment variable with the Wasm edge. Uh, plug in and using it from like the host OS. I'm just wondering how exactly that works. That kind of stumped me. Totally. So um, basically, there was, uh, I mentioned this PR a little bit. So this PR basically is, uh, I extended the Wasm plugin 
um, or the Wasm Edge plugin to be able to read that environment variable and then you know check the host like, hey, do you have the, any shared libraries for me? If so, let's mount them into the container. And then you look at the um, container file here. So that's saying, here's where my host um, shared libraries are. You can access them there. The Wasm Edge um, package will actually install the, the um, shared libraries to there, but you can also install them there yourself. And then um, when C run Wasm starts the container and sees that, oh, this um, environment variable is set, I'm going to look in this directory. Ah, I see something. I'm going to give it access to that. And then the, um, this environment variable is also, I think, for Wasm Edge, uh, the runtime specifically. It uses that to actually interpret um, the, the path uh, that those shared libraries are and attach them to the process. So that's actually how we got this, um, the AI chatbot to work. I think this, uh, the shared library was needed for that. that. Did that help? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So what's in llamachat.wasm? And can it be like any inferencing engine, or does it have to be specialized? That is a great question. So I am not familiar with that aspect of it, but I'm pretty sure uh, uh, it was just got from the internet. Um, so this is, uh, so that's the normal. Oh yeah, here we are. So this is, yeah, so this is a uh, project done by Wasm Edge, um, Llama Edge. And that's basically a chatbot um, specifically, um, you know, that's, you know, built with Wasm. Um, I'm not as familiar with all the details because I've, you know, taken this presentation over from a colleague who's more knowledgeable. But um, the, my understanding of it is it's, you know, a model server that's, you know, uh, you know presenting a chatbot. And you could do this with another Wasm application. It just, like, happens that this one uh, was the one that we used. Um, I don't know if there are many other Wasm AI chatbots, um, but I expect with the confluence of all those different buzzwords, there will be more in the future. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Hey, Peter, two questions. Can you give me an example of a Wasm plugin? What, what would be an, a good example of? I, I never. Totally, yeah, no. Um, uh, so, uh, like the ones that we're mounting into the container? Uh, yeah, so um, I know the one that we used for this. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I actually don't even know what the um, what it is. So here's a Wasm Edge plugin, Wasip, and then I don't actually know what this does, but it was really important uh, for us to be able to use. Um, let's see. Oh, that's just a bug with it. So you know, it sometimes doesn't work. Here we go. Um, so this one here is uh, specifically for uh, running, um, you know, AI workloads, I guess. Um, but I just listened to Sohan and listened blindly. So you'd have to ask him or harass us on GitHub um, if you want to know more. Hey, Peter. So going back to the actual build and the yes. image that was produced, uh, I noticed that in the manifest, um, that the architecture was Wasm, or Wasm, Wasm yeah. 32. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about what that means and how? Totally. Wh what? How is that different from like the actual CPU architecture? Which it sounds right. like with this, if there's support, it might not matter what the actual CPU has. Because right. Yeah, so Wasm, if it knows Wasm? So the see actually the um, OCI OS um, and platform variants are really for like this OS is Linux and this yeah this like um, the the platform is ARM64 or whatever but there are special defined ones for Wasm like the the Wasm, Wasm working group and the CNCF I can't remember what they're exactly called but they basically advocated for in the OCI standards to have a special Wasm one so let's see Wasi Wasm 32 image spec. So this is actually in the image specification saying like a um, an image with this platform. No, this is C run. This is different. But um, ba, ba, ba. well, I'm not going to try. Oh, there we go. This one. So this is like an image specification for this specific time, and then C run Wasm is interpreting that image specification, um, but then also building you know the classic uh, container. Um, constructs around it as well. Um, so it's it's a standard. Um, I don't know very much about the standards specifically. 
Anything else? More. Sorry, I have one more. Please. <laughs> no, absolutely. Would it work with um, CubeVert? I mean, can I create? Can I mount? You know, an image into a, a CubeVert. So that's a great question. So, from my understanding, CubeVert um, uses a container to call into um, you know the Vert Manager on the host. Um, I. It might be a little bit tricky to then spin up that vert manager, that the virtual machine that's created, and inside of that have the Wasm binary and be able to like chain the events like that. I think theoretically, I wonder if like I think I would think about it differently, where I would think you would use kubevert to build yourself a machine, and on that machine, then you would you know run a Kubernetes cluster and you would run this Wasm, you know, among other workloads. Like you know, I wouldn't necessarily use the virtual machine, and then only also it like the uh, the Wasm binary inside of it. Um, I think that that would be a little bit paranoid, maybe. But you know, if you really need to be super secure, you could do it that way. Um, but I would more think of Kubernetes as a platform to build a Kubernetes cluster, and then inside of that Kubernetes cluster, have you know all of this stuff set up, and that would be on the QCow that you use to run the Kubert uh, with Kubert. So. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could do it for sure. Cool. Well, Any other questions? thank you, everyone, for joining, and uh, enjoy DevConf.